I'm Renata. I am a UX researcher. Uh, I work with URA Design on improving usability of open source software. I'm also a part of a fantastic community called Open Source Design. Um, I contribute to GNOME and Fedora Design team, and I'm also a, a computer uh, science student. But um, that's enough about me. I would like to introduce you to someone else. Um, this is Aya. This is my uh, cousin's dog. Um, over the last month, I'd say, uh, she has been out of town a lot. So I spent some time with her. And I never had a pet before, so I was uh, quite new to this. And I got to learn a lot about her uh, during the last month. Um, so all the time, uh, she wanted uh, she wanted to chew my shoes. She wanted to chew my socks, and um, basically, she was really frustrated. She was just running around all day, and I also was running around trying to meet her wants and make her wishes come true. Um, but soon, I realized that that is not the way. Uh, to solve this. Uh, so I decided to step back and observe her. And I thought, uh, instead of giving her what she wants, I'm going to see what she really needs. And it turns out that uh, she didn't need a lot. So she basically needs um, a warm shelter. Uh, she needs some good food. Uh, she needs to more attention from me. And she mostly needed to socialize. She wanted to play with her friends. And after that, I approached to her in a totally different way. And she looks more like this now. She's a happier dog. Um, so this example, to me, explains uh, user research perfectly. If we look at the concept and uh, user research, it's basically uh, user research focuses on understanding user behaviors, needs, and motivations through observation techniques and analysis and feedback. Uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, feedback and methodologies later. Uh, and also, this quote is always on the back of my mind when I think about user research. It basically says, design are only assumptions until validated with end users. Basically, when designers and developers are building an interface, they do that on how they think it's the best way for the users. But in the end, that gets proven wrong by the end users most of the time. Um, so that's why we test and we do research along the way. So user research is kind of a connect uh, end users with designers and developers and kind of translates users' needs and wants that we talked earlier uh, to the designers and developers. So when we think of doing user research and doing testings, we always think about a big glass wall with fancy labs with a lot of resources and equipment. Um, we think about recruiting people to test with. We think about um, needing uh, to have UX researchers that are professionals to do this. Um, but that is not always the case. And it, it shouldn't be like that. So there is a way that uh, you can do user research. There is a path to do that uh, with uh, minimal resources. And I think it's all about cutting the right corners. So for example, um, the lab that you've seen, the, the glass lab, uh, could just be your chair at your desk at your job, for example, or a, a coffee shop where you can just sit with one tester. Um, your users, you do not need to recruit many users. You can just call your friends or colleagues and do the testing with them. Um, your equipment 
can simply be just your laptop, uh, Wi-Fi, your neighbor's Wi-Fi, um, really just whatever you have. And you can do all of this and same, have the same effect and impact in design, uh, just like when they do with the professionals. So let's start do that. Um, the first thing that we need to do is choosing the right method. Um, so before choosing, you just need to think about the problem that you have. And then there are many methods that you can choose from uh, to solve your problem. Um, this is a very great uh, method uh, that d was described by Chris Christian Rohr. Okay, uh, I'll link the full article in the slides, but he basically described uh, more than 20 different user research methods and categorized them. Uh, so there's uh, usability lab st studies, ethnographic studies, um, diary, uh, cam camera studies, A-B testing. Um, he basically divided these on quantitative and qualitative uh, way of doing research. So quantitative is more about the numbers, qualitative is about the whys of the, the design, basically. I choose uh, just some of these methods because these are the ones that I mostly experience with, but also that are mostly used, uh, more broadly used. So there's usability testing, A-B testing, surveys, and card source. Uh, card sorting is a great way uh, for organizing uh, information infrastructure. So it's basically uh, helps you discover your users' mental models. So it helps them, uh, it helps you to understand how they really think and how they organize their topics and their ideas. Um, the way you do this, you can do this remotely. There are so many great um, softwares that help you do this. Uh, but the best way is to do it uh, in person. So it, it could be one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions or you testing with a group of people. Uh, basically, you uh, give them some uh, cards with the information for, from your software uh, that you want to organize for example, a website or whatever that is, and then see how they organize them. And ask them always to think out loud and to tell you why are they uh, grouping these things together, because that helps you understand them better. You can do this um, uh, mostly in the beginning when um, you want to redesign a whole software or when you're just starting out to do uh, the design. This helps you mostly in the beginning. Uh, there's always uh, uh, there's also surveys and interviews. This is a great way to get to know your audience. So, for example, you do this in the beginning before starting the product. Um, you get to know all the users basically. So, you do surveys online. This is a very also very cheap way to get to know the users. So you do a survey online, you uh, send it out to a lot of people that you target and you think are going to use that software and just ask them uh, about the whole product and what they think. Um, interviews are similar, but even better because uh, you get to talk uh, in person with each user. So you get to ask a lot of specific questions that you can achieve with surveys. So sur surveys are more static. So basically you have some questions that they answer, but with interviews, you get to talk to each of them. And um, besides the surveys questions, you can just deviate and ask them more about uh, what they think on a specific thing that you are more interested to know. Um, there's also usability testing. Um, this is the most common way to test uh, the application's usability. Um, so how do we do this? Uh, the first step is to choose personas, basically your target audience, who is more likely to use your product. 
if you are building a software that is, uh, has a general purpose, let's say like a calendar, you want to include uh, as much diverse group of people as possible. If you are uh, testing an application that is a software that is more specific, for example, uh, GIMP or uh, GIMP, for example, is just for designers. So you want to include beginner designers, designers who have used alternatives of GIMP before and don't know how to really use it. So you can just collect a specific target, which is designers. Um, after that, uh, you want to decide how many testers you are going to include. So for example, uh, I, in most cases, I have found out that five testers, it's enough to uncover most usability problems. Um, because if you do that less than that, um, you won't get all the problems that usability uh, has. Uh, if you do more than five, uh, then sometimes problems get just uh, repeatedly the same, so you won't find out uh, more. You just keep repeating uh, the same problems. After deciding your users, your target users, um, you go ahead and create some scenario tasks or just tasks. Uh, tasks, are, tasks are basically um, short uh, stories or uh, where you tell each tester what are they going to do and how are they going to use your software. So for example, uh, if you want to, uh, you can say, can you just find this specific feature for me? Um, how many tasks? It depends on the uh, size of the uh, testing that you organize. So for example, I think, again, five to uh, 10 tasks are more than enough, because more than that, the users can get a little bit bored uh, during the session, and the session uh, might be really long. Um, after that, we do the actual testing. So. Uh, the tools with, that we need for testing are basically our laptop or um, mobile or depends on what are you testing, which software are you testing. Uh, before the test, you should print all their tasks and give them to the user and just get familiar with them. Ask them like about them, who they are. And it's very important to explain to them that the testing, it's not about them. It's about the software, because they can really get uncomfortable and think that they, when they are not doing a good job, it's their fault. But just make it clear to them that uh, if they are not doing a good job, it's the software's fault. Just blame it on the software and the software's usability. Um, after that uh, starts the testing process. So uh, you, when the testing uh, process starts, you do not have to inter interrupt the user. So just let them do the tasks and do not interrupt them because that might confuse them. Wait until the test ends and prepare all the questions that you have in mind. Just write them somewhere in your notes and ask them after the session it's done. So after the test, you do the follow-up questions, like for example, you seemed really frustrated here. What were you thinking? And um, how would you do this differently? Or whatever questions you had in mind during the testing. And that's basically it about usability testing. Another uh, great way to do user research is A-B testing. A-B testing is basically what the name says. It's comparing um, a version A of a software with a version B of the software and choosing the users actually most of the times randomly. So you present each, um, each uh, case, case A and case B, and see how they react to it. Uh, so this is more of a quantitative approach to do user research. So with A-B testing, you get more numbers on uh, how much people do this and how much people do that. But with usability testing, you get the qualitative part. So you get the whys. Why did the user react like this? So to, in order to do a great uh, user research, mostly you should combine all of these methods. So do not use just 
A-B testing or just usability testing and say that that is okay. You should combine as much methods as you can to get different approaches and different uh, opinions. After you do all of these testings, no matter which method you chose, uh, the very important part is to do the analysis and um, to do the results. Basically, to tell other people what you have learned uh, uh, during these testings and research that you have done. You can do this in a lot of ways. Uh, you can just write a formal paper, like 15 to 20 pages, and uh, where you explain everything by words, but also by screenshots and telling exactly where the problems were. Um, if you don't have the time for that, you can also do a less formal paper, just explaining uh, quickly everything. You can do live presentations. If that's so you should talk to the team that you're working with. If they are more comfortable with listening to presentations, then do that. If they need to read everything, then do the papers. Uh, you can also do bug trackers. So this happens a lot on uh, open source software, where you just file a bug and then explain everything there. This can be really messy, because the comments can just get nested. But that's also a way. So. Uh, during the, when you are presenting, uh, so the things that you've learned, just be mindful of the visualizations. These are the great, great tools that you can use. So for example, just take screenshots that uh, you've done during the testings. Uh, highlight the part that you think was more difficult to use. And this way, whoever is reading your test uh, has uh, easier time understanding what you meant. Because by words, sometimes people get confused. And when they see it visually, it can help them a lot. Also use uh, tables or charts to explain uh, more about the users or software. Another uh, great tool, a visual tool, to, uh, that you can use is our heat maps. Heat maps are uh, basically, here uh, on one side, you list off the task that you give to the user. On the other side, you have some boxes with colors uh, to rate how easy or hard it was for the user to accomplish the task. For example, uh, the green ones are the ones that the user had a really easy time figuring out. Uh, the yellow ones are the ones where user uh, were a little bit confused but still figured it out. Uh, the red ones are where they spend a lot of time thinking about that, uh, so extended amount of time. And the black ones are when they just give up and they say, I can't do this task. Just be careful when you are doing the testings. Uh, even if you uh, see that something is really e easy to, to do or a button is there, just do not lead them or do not give them help. Uh, before the testing uh, finishes. So these are just some examples that I've worked on uh, during the last year of user research, just so you can see it in action, how helpful it can be. So this is HTTPS everywhere. Uh, the before part was basically links and checkboxes, not very user friendly. Uh, you don't need to watch a tutorial to understand how this works. You should be able to figure it out just by the software itself, just by the interface. So this is after user research. This is after the testing that we've done. And it looks much more um, easy to use. This is Thunderbird preferences redesign. So this is how it was and now. And this is Briar. Uh, so the f this was a completely new feature. Uh, the first prototype didn't actually do well in usability testings. So we decided to make two screens. We split it in two parts. And uh, right now, this is m better, but it's not there. So we are testing again and seeing how this goes. Uh, yeah, so this is it. Thank you, everyone, again, for coming. Uh, if you have any questions or want to talk to me, uh, I will be here or just find me at Renata Gigai, my handle almost everywhere. 
Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, I don't know if we have time for any questions. I'll, I'll just try. <laughs> so, if there's anyone want to ask something? Okay. Yeah. Um, how do you talk about the importance of user testing t to to get other people to buy, buy off on it? Uh, because it does take time and energy to do it. So how how do you convince uh, well, to get the resources to do I so? I think th this right now it's a part of the convincing part. So you just go out and tell people instead of how hard it is to do that. I just decide to tell them how easy it can be to do that. And that's the one part. And the other part is showing real examples on how uh, impactful that is. And I think that's the best way and the easiest way to, uh, for them to decide that, hey, this is, this is amazing and we should do this. So by real examples. Thank you.